Okay, so are you looking to live stream your pastor's online Bible study? Well, last night was our Christmas service, and I got to live stream my pastor's Christmas online Bible study. It went great. We had more than 700 people watching, and I especially like the way it looks. So I wanted to make sure that I came on here and told you guys about everything that you need to know about creating a good online Bible study that looks good on camera and is appealing to the listeners. Now, I'm not going to be talking as much about tech in this video, although, as you know, if you've watched a lot on the channel, I do a lot about the tech side of things, but I'm going to be talking more about the composition in this video. These are the things that really make the difference. It, you could have a $10,000 camera, and if you don't get the lighting right, it's not going to look good. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video, and stay tuned to the end because I'm going to be sharing with you an extra little bonus tip that if you want to upgrade from like a webcam or your phone whenever you're live streaming to a like a professional camera and a DSLR I'm gonna be sharing with you what you actually need to do that because it isn't as simple as buying a camera and connecting it to your laptop that's not as simple as that so stay tuned till the end for that awesome little tip that I'm really excited about but let's jump into the video alright so my first tip is composition composition is one of the biggest ways to tell a story using a camera and a lot of times people don't realize how important composition is sometimes the camera will be leaning far back in the head in fact try that out lean the camera back a little bit and my head's all the way down here in like the bottom left corner it doesn't look good all right bring it back or lean forward a little bit or it's like this and i'm looking into the camera like that okay hey you can tell while Lana's operating the camera. All right, all right, back up. So composition really makes a huge difference. So what do I recommend with competition? Competition. With composition. So last night, Pastor Allen, my, my pastor, was in center frame at a table. So this is more of a sit-down Bible study type thing. I was using a 50 millimeter lens, for those of you that know what that is, with a 1.8 aperture. Of course, Christmas tree in the background looked beautiful. I mean, you're seeing the footage right now. Uh, and we're going to get to audio here in tip number three. I just gave a spoiler, but hey. Audio is very important, and we'll talk more about that later. But he was center framed, and there was a good looking background. So I wanted to make sure that the image wasn't very cluttered, that there wasn't a lot of random stuff, boxes, dirty dishes in the background, blankets. I don't want any of that in the background. I want it to be a clean background, and I'm going to spend time figuring that out. And dealing with composition, I won't go deep into this, but there's something called the rule of thirds, where there are literally three by three by three boxes on on a camera and in fact you're seeing some of this right now three by three by three boxes that help you compose the image so right now my I'm in center frame right now I hope I am at least Alana's operating the camera so we'll see how this looks at the end but I am in center frame my eye is about on that second uh, line that's with and there's a little bit of room between my head and the top of the frame that's usually a perfect composition this is great for one-on-one -on -one, I'm talking to a camera now sometimes stay keep the camera right there don't follow me sometimes you can you can also have your eyes kind of on this little corner area right here if you're looking more that way but if it's just you and you're doing an online Bible study this is usually the best there's a little bit of room between my just a little bit like a few fingers maybe a fist maybe a fist between my head and the top of the on the top of the uh, the frame and you can see down to about right here in this area or so. That's usually a good, comfortable composition. And if you think about it, whenever you're watching movies, different comp shot compositions give you different feelings. Some shot compositions that are really close like this will feel, you know, like, I don't know, trapped or like you're in a smaller space. Whenever I'm like this, though, even though this is a small room, it's looking like a bigger room with plenty of room to record video. This is just my bedroom. I mean, my bed's right there, so the composition makes it look like a better space than it even is. So composition is very important. Now, if you do have two people on screen, a lot of times you'll have one person on one side looking, kind of facing more that way, and the other person facing more that way. That, that way they can easily look at that person and the camera, and it looks more natural on camera. So that's what you want to do in kind of an interview scenario. If you have more than that, then just Instagram DM me or something. I can work out a good shop composition with you. But anyway, let's get into tip number two. All right, tip number two is lighting. Now, for lighting, this video, uh, I'm actually using the same light I used last night. It's a GVM. Uh, well, I'll have it linked up in the description. It's a GVM. Let's see. I don't remember the name of the... Yeah, it's some some kind of a model. I think it's the 90 watt by color. It looks... I mean, fantastic. I got a GVM softbox to go with it, and it 
it's very soft as you can see if you don't know what that means that's okay I'll leave everything that I am using in this video to shoot this video in the description below so if you want to go check it out on Amazon and see the reviews there they are there but I really like this light I've only had it for a few weeks now and it has been phenomenal doing everything I wanted to do not even in full brightness and it's it's crushing so I used that last night and it really provided a lot of soft light on his face as you're seeing here there's a little bit of shadow on his right side now you might be thinking right now that shadows are bad and you need you need to get rid of shadows that's not the case many times for a more professional looking video you want to have a little bit of shadows on one side of the face and a lot of times you'll see this in Hollywood films or something where they're they'll have this little bit of um, shadow right here it's called Rembrandt lighting usually it's a little triangle in this area of a uh, light coming from the light itself that the nose yeah the nose causes a shadow right there that's usually called Rembrandt lighting and that usually makes it look a little more dramatic uh, you can also go with like top-down lighting if you're doing more beauty fashion but you don't need to worry about that kind of keeps the light about 45 degrees um, to 60 degrees away from the camera and have that shining down on this side of the face. Another thing you can do is you can also have a hair light back here. Um, I'm kind of using a lamp over there, but you can have a light right here kind of shining, just filling in a little bit of those shadows with a little bit of warmer colors. I like to do cooler colors as a main light and warmer colors right here. Now, keep in mind, you can just use a window and it will look fantastic. The sun is one of the best forms of light. I mean, it's this giant flaming ball in the sky. It looks pretty good on camera, so I highly recommend that too. And it's totally free, I hope. I don't know, maybe where you're at you need to pay for window time or something. <laughs> Another thing to consider when lighting is lighting the background. Now, I did this. This is really budget lighting setup. It's $60 LED lights. I've done a whole video on this before, and lots of people have been loving it. Um, they've been telling me, like, dude, these lights are awesome. Uh, you can watch that video right there. I've, people have bought, like, 30 or 40 of them, and they're doing, they're doing great. And I've, I still use them. I mean, you see these blue lights back here? Those are the $60 LED lights. I actually lit the Christmas tree and the fireplace with a warmer color light. Of course, using the wireless app. And they didn't pay me to say that, by the way. I just like these lights. I use it to actually light the Christmas tree because I didn't like how not so bright the Christmas lights were. So I kind of just added a little more there. And you can't really tell if you don't know what you're looking for. But... It really helped kind of bring the image together. Now, you don't want the background to be brighter than your pastor or the subject. You want to make sure that their face is the subject and it's standing out from the background. I just like to have a little bit of color back there. I usually like the way it looks, and that's and that's kind of a personal preference for me. So just something to keep in mind in backlighting. Okay, but next up is tip number three. But first, before we get into that, please like this video and comment below if you have any questions. Seriously, I want to answer your questions and subscribe for other media tips and tools for churches. You know, there are a lot of other things that you can do to make a live stream go further faster on social media and specifically YouTube. So if you want more tips on how to do that, subscribe to this channel for a ton more videos and live streams with active Q and A's so you can ask questions live and I can answer them on the live stream. It's very fun every Saturday. You want to be sure to subscribe for that. But on to tip number three. All right, so tip number three is audio. Now for this, for this example, in our living room, the walls are a little bit wider and sound can bounce a lot more. The ceilings are higher. So what I did was I got some poles and I put a blanket up on top of those poles. That just helped to dampen the sound immediately because I was using the Sennheiser Boom mic. So this was the mic I was using. Yep, it's the Sennheiser there and it's a great mic, great boom mic. I'll link it up in the description below. I actually got it from somebody else. I didn't have to pay for it. Um, we use it at the church sometimes as well. So it is a fairly expensive mic, but I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you want to get it anyway. Because this thing has some crazy good audio that comes out of it. Um, it's just, it's fantastic. Phantasmatic. Up some singular voices all across the nation, around the world, who are going to come against the collective efforts of the prophets, the false prophets of our day. And we're going to talk a little bit about what we've been through this year, and where we're going in 2021. But more importantly, that tonight, as we're so yeah, bef if you are thinking about investing into professional video equipment or anything such as that. Audio is more important than video, in my opinion. I mean, in most people's opinion as well. Audio, I would say, is like 60 or 70% of video because you can have terrible looking video and people don't mind. But if the audio sounds like this, that sounds terrible. People aren't going to stay around and watch that. They're going to leave. 
So it's important to invest in good audio before you do that. Right here, I'm using a Zoom H5 Handy Recorder that works for just you know sitting here and it's running on AA batteries, I believe, to an SD card. It works great. I'll leave that in the description as well if you want to take a look at that. All right, so let's get into the extra tip since you've been watching this long. If you want to connect a DSLR camera or a professional looking camera like the one I'm using, the Sony a6400, that was a big breath, you need a capture card in order to direct it to the computer. Now I'm going to quickly talk about the Elgato CamLink 4K. This thing is awesome. That was upside down. The Elgato CamLink 4K. This thing is awesome. I use it literally weekly uh, for our live streams and then of course you do an HDMI to the camera and then it goes in to the computer via the USB 2.0 port I believe is what that is. So this is the Elgato CamLink 4K. You need a good capture card in order to get video from your camera to your computer. This will even level up your Zoom meeting games. It also allows for audio to go through it. So if you want to connect an audio source to your camera, this it can go through the Elgato Cam Link. I really like this thing. Under $130, depending on where you buy it from. I'll leave a link in the description of this video below if you want to go and check out the reviews. This is amazing because most capture cards out there are thousands of dollars. You can get a Blackmagic A10 Mini for like $230, I believe, which has four camera inputs, but it's HDMI, so you're not going to get a good distance out of it. This is HDMI as well. It's more for a studio type thing where I'm 10 feet away from the camera with my computer. That's more what this is for. So if you need a longer distance capture card, I'll leave some other options in the description as well. But this thing has traveled with me on the road. We've gone and live streamed from Alabama and South Carolina. And this thing works great. I plug it in, use vMix to live stream, and you can live stream to multiple platforms using vMix. So the Elgato Cam Link is awesome. If you want to learn about every other piece of tech that I use, including the camera, the lens, and everything else that you're actually seeing right now, I'll leave a link in the description to go and check out a full review of all the equipment that I use, which I might actually need to update soon because there is more equipment coming in. This light in particular, which I mentioned um, in another video that is, it's, it's doing pretty good. So be sure to subscribe for future videos and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.